Hi, I'm Ryan Payne with Garage Gurus, and today I have a tech tip for you on diagnosing an issue with the IMRC system on this 2019 Ford F-150. Let's take a look. All right, we're over here at our F-150. Uh, I've got my Alltel Ultra connected. Like I mentioned before, this thing did come to us uh, with the check engine light on. Uh, so I already know what the code is, uh, but I'm going to show it to you real quick. Uh, so keys on. I'm already in the PCM through the Alltel. Uh, so I'm going to hit trouble codes. We'll get our continuous memory codes here, and we'll see. Uh, it should be the same code, hopefully. There it is. That P2004 uh, for intake manifold runner control uh, stuck open on bank one. Now, like I said, I knew this beforehand. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, some data PIDs. Uh, so I did a little background research on the system, uh, kind of seeing what PIDs might be available. Um, and now I'm, I saved it on the test drive. Uh, it's kind of hard to film inside the truck. So I'm going to go back to the main menu here on the Altel. I'm going to go to Data Manager. I'm going to go into Review Data. And there's our Ford. And here's the PIDs. I got RPM. I've got an either on off PID for the runner control itself. Uh, I've got a runner control uh, voltage, which is off the sensor for bank two. Uh, I've got a fault, no fault or fault uh, PID, and also have the runner control voltage for uh, bank number one. So I'm going to choose uh, engine RPM. I'm going to choose bank two, runner control, the voltage off the sensor, and I'm going to choose bank one as well. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go to graph merge. I'm going to back this up a little bit. And you can probably see the little camera there as well as that flag. So that's a nice little tool that Alto has um, that when I see something, or the passengers in the car that I have actually reviewing the scan tool data as I'm driving down the road, uh, if they see something that seems off to them, they can hit that flag button and it makes it much easier for me as a technician to get back and review that data uh, whenever I get back. So you see the flag there. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go frame by frame. Now what you're looking at is the blue trace uh, is gonna be the RPM. The green is going to be runner control, uh, bank two voltage off the sensor and the red is uh, bank one. All right, you also see at the bottom, you see off and on. We're gonna focus on that off number as I flip through this frame by frame. And you'll see it's basically sitting at idle here. And we just scroll along. There it goes. Keep scrolling. All right, you see the RPM start to rise. Now remember this system, it should be right around 2000 RPMs is where it's going to switch. So see, I didn't really get there. Keep following along, we're getting closer to our flag. Keep going frame by frame, we're back down to idle. Just kind of cruising through a parking lot here, trying to get out to where I can actually get into this thing. Now there we go, we're at 2100. Nothing's happened yet. You still see the intake manifold runner control there is off. Just barely got above it in RPM. Now we're doing a pretty steady climb. There it goes. And right there, you see where the RPM is actually at 1636, so back up just a little bit. I got a 2141. And then you see right there, the intake manifold runner control sw switched over to the on. So it's commanding uh, those, those flaps to open up on the intake uh, manifolds to go back to the original diameter uh, of the runners. And you see immediately, right, we see a shift in the voltage uh, for the bank two monitor uh, through that sensor and you see it begin to rise. And you see it jumps from, let me go back to right at the bottom, it's running about uh, 1.19 volts and pretty quickly it moves um, through its full range of motion and now it's up at 3.33, uh, which matches where bank one is, but bank one never moved. All right, and that, remember that's what our code is for, is for uh, the bank one being stuck closed. And remember, they should be opposite of one another. So one that starts high is going to go low. The one that starts low is going to go high. So that info right there verifies to me uh, that for whatever reason, don't really know at this point, uh, that bank two is moving. You can see it on the PID. The sensor is obviously working. Uh, the uh, actuator, the solenoid is working. Uh, no issue. Uh, the PCM seems to be commanding it just like it's supposed to, right around 2000 RPM. Uh, but there is no change uh, in the IMRC uh, on bank number one through the sensor, all right? So the next thing we're gonna do here is let's take a look at the uh, OEM test procedures and let's see what Ford is calling for um, to diagnose this thing. So we hop over here uh, to our service, uh, service information 
So first thing you see here, when I put in the uh, P2004 code into my service information, uh, and here's the code, intake manifold runner control uh, stuck open, uh, and it says that the DTC sets when the intake manifold runner control is commanded closed, uh, and the intake manifold runner control bank one sensor indicates that the IMRC is open. So it is actually not moving uh, when it's supposed to, which we just verified um, there through our test drive data. So it walks you through all the co causes there. We could have a short to voltage. We could have a uh, circuit short to signal return, a circuit short to ground, a damaged actuator, damaged solenoid, or some sort of restricted uh, vacuum hose. So several different things to run through there. Uh, but an interesting thing you see here is this diagnostic aid. It says the IMRC1 uh, sensor value should change when it is commanded open or closed. So I think we're seeing that's not happening on the test drive, but let's actually take the scan tool and bidirectionally control that system uh, and see if we can get something to move here uh, in the service bay. All right, so I've got the truck running. Uh, I've already drilled down into the active test uh, for this IMRC, so let's take a look. Uh, you see where I've got intake manifold, runner control, either on or off. Right now it's on. And there's my uh, runner control 2 voltage and runner control 1 voltage uh, from the IMRC sensors. And what I'm going to do here is just command it. I'm going to turn it off. And we see exactly what we saw in that test drive. We're seeing a drop in voltage uh, on number 2. And we see absolutely no change uh, with the uh, bank 1 monitor. Nothing changes there. So obviously it's the same condition as we saw when we were test driving it. So we're gonna have to dig farther into the, uh, the uh, OEM test procedures uh, to find this fault. So let's do that. All right, so over here at our uh, OE service information, and here's the next step here. It tells you uh, if you got that 2004, it says you know, DTC is 0505 or 0506, go to HU2, which is not us. Uh, 660, 663, two, uh, 27 or 27, one, go to HU6. That's not us. And for all others, go to HU15, all right? So that's what we'll do next. We go over to HU16 and you can see it there. And it says, first thing to do is a visual inspection uh, for disconnected IMRC linkage. So we'll check that. We'll check the solenoid and vacuum lines for correct connection, damage, any vacuum leaks. Uh, then we'll disconnect the linkage, uh, inspect it for restrictions. There should be some spring tension whenever you operate that uh, thing by hand. Uh, rotate the plate to fully open, fully close. Make sure it will move all the way uh, inside the manifold. And then check for restrictions uh, during rotation. Uh, so that'll be our next step. Let's hop over here to the truck and uh, get all this inspection work done. All right, so we're here underneath the hood of our F-150. Uh, Going to do this inspection. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, something caught my eye as soon as I got in here. Um, you know, it's not easy to see because all this is on the back side of this manifold. Uh, but the first thing I notice is this zip tie right here around this vacuum line that runs to, this is actually the solenoid uh, for bank one. So I'm going to guess, kind of feeling around my fingers how tight that zip tie is around that vacuum line. But that's probably a restriction there. So I'm not getting vacuum uh, to this uh, actuator. And that's probably why we're not seeing any movement. Uh, so before I start getting out meters and, and uh, going through with the rest of this diagnostic or even trying to get back here and disconnect that linkage and feel if everything moves, I'm just going to uh, try to take the easy route here, take this zip tie loose and see if we have any, any change and I will actuate it again. All right, so I went ahead and cut that zip tie uh, and, and I've got the truck running. I've got those same pids pulled up in my active test. Uh, so let's take a look here. Now, the first thing I notice is now both voltages are, are low. So one thing we're seeing here, and this is something that happens quite regularly as fast as cars are advancing is, if you remember back, and I've even mentioned it when we started working on this truck, um, that those two values from bank one to bank two uh, should change positions. One starts high, one starts low, and they cross each other as it activates. It's pretty obvious now looking at this truck, this is a 19 compared to, remember the PIDs we looked at were off a of 16, that Ford is doing it different on this system. This one, they're gonna be the same. Uh, they're gonna both be low and then they'll go high. So right now they're in their off position. Uh, so let's see when we change it, if we actually get a change down. Remember bank one, we saw nothing. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. And there you go. Both of them immediately went to about 3.34, 3.35 volts. So that tells me two things. It tells me that that zip tie that was around that harness is what was causing the issue to begin with. Um, this truck did have some work done on it. 
uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, not really sure what. We didn't really get that far with a the customer. Uh, they kind of dropped it off in a hurry for us to take a look at for them. Uh, but obviously, for whatever reason, someone put a zip tie and just it's pinched that line off. Uh, but also, I said we learned uh, these, these trucks ch and change quickly. I said 16 was an inverse relationship where uh, on this 19 now uh, they both run the same direction. They're they're when they're on uh, they're high, and when they're off they both go low. All right. So the next step here is I'm going to go out and test drive this thing. Uh, clear the codes out. Test drive it. Uh, two full key cycles. Um, make sure no codes come back, and then uh, if nothing, if nothing comes back, we'll give it back to the customer. All right, I'm back from my test drive. Uh, after I cleared the codes out, I went ahead and ran another fault scan, and you can see here on my Altel uh, that it's passed. There's no faults in it, so it was just something simple. You know, I, I, we aren't sure what work was done to this thing, but obviously that that zip tie uh, was enough to pinch that line off to where it could not operate, uh, and the PCM picked that up through. Uh, not seeing the sensor change, the voltage change on those IMRC uh, sensors. So for more uh, tech tips like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash the thumbs up. And for more information about Garage Gurus, check us out at garagegurus.tech. See you next time.